Don't you think I have a nice rack? Well, yeah, I think so. Um, so this is the project for today. Uh, after we moved to the new place and I got my new lab, um, this thing has been off pretty much. Um, for a while after we moved, all I had running was um, the the big UPS at the bottom um, running my internet equipment. Uh, I didn't have my 710 or this this big bastard, this 1950 right here. This thing puts out more heat than the rest of this whole rack. But uh, and then my UPS decided uh, to blow up some batteries. Um, these things are not supposed to be as bulgy as they are, like this guy. He's bulging out the middle. Uh, this guy has got really bad. Yeah, I ain't supposed to look like that, so, whatever. Uh, got some new batteries for only a couple hundred dollars. Don't tell the wife. Um... So we're going to put the batteries back in the UPS, we're going to rack some shiny new gear, well shiny new to me gear, uh, some super micro servers, and an neck gear switch, and um, I even got a Juniper, um, well you can't see it, but it's an SA2500, um, all the stuff is old, and um, it was decommissioned by its owner. So now I got it. So well uh first order operations is gonna be getting that UPS back up and running. It's a APC 3000 VA smart UPS. Um these are the wires wire harness for the battery. So yeah this Yeah, something like that. That one makes a little bit more sense. So, they're connected in, there's four of them connected in series, another four connected in series, and that, uh, that is, those two are connected in parallel, if that makes any sense. So, we're gonna get that all set up and going and um, crank up the UPS and we'll go from there, start racking equipment. So let's talk about why we're replacing the battery why I'm replacing the batteries in this UPS. Um, uh, a couple months ago uh, I heard the fan running on the UPS, the cooling fan. It was running somewhat often. So I didn't think about it. A couple hours later, I came in and it was still on. Um, so I put my hand on the UPS and it was warm to the touch. Um, and uh, I started figuring that that's probably not a good state for it to be in. Um, turns out, uh, after I took the batteries out, they were at about 130 degrees um, after it had been off for a while. Uh, and batteries don't like to cook that long. Um, you can see, uh, never mind the, the damage the tape caused, um, but you can see that uh, that cell was not happy. And most of the rest of them looked just like that. There was a number that I was able to salvage. Um, so this one came out of the same, so you can see B4 and then B1. They were on the same string, but they were three batteries apart. So uh, this one was salvageable, so it was at... It's at 13 point, you know, oh, whatever. Um, so this one is still good. We'll look at the charge on this one just so you can see what kind of state that battery's in. 2.98, so about 3 volts. Um, this one is toast. Deader than dead. Um, so I'll salvage this battery for maybe another project, um, maybe I'll do some stuff with solar. Uh, but I did kind of want to go over the difference between the old batteries that I got and the new batteries. 
that I just bought. So let's look at that real quick. So you can see Dura 12 8F2, 12 volt, 8 amp, 8 amp hour AGM. Um, this one is Dura HR uh, 9FR, 12 9 amp hour, uh, 32WPC, whatever. Same form factor, um, but this one is a high rate, so it's designed to be in UPSs and deal with the sudden um, sudden loads that get put on UPSs when the uh, when the power drops. So it's it's designed to put out a whole bunch of power really quick. So the process for now is going to be we're going to go through each one of these batteries. Um, these are brand new from the store, and uh, I'm going to hook them up to a multimeter, see what voltage they are. And I'm going to label each one. So um, we're going to name uh, this side is going to be A side, this side is going to be B side. Um, B one, A1 one through 4, B1 through 4. We're going to put the voltage, um, the or the battery name, the voltage, and then the date that it's going into service. Um, just to keep a good record of um, you know, how long these batteries tend to last. The original ones I bought, the ones I just showed you, um, I had for, uh, you can see, 3 of 17 on it, so that's when I bought them. Uh, I didn't measure the voltage on them going in, whatever, but uh, those have a one-year warranty. Um, it ran out not long before these um, blew themselves up uh, in UPS. So, um, these, the professional UPS ones, had quite a bit, quite a bit of an additional expense. Um, are rated for uh, well the old ones are rated for one year uh, one year warranty and five years in service these are ten years in service and a three year warranty so um, a little bit more money hopefully I get a little bit better, better battery so uh, I'm gonna start testing these so you can see this one's at 12.923 um, it's gonna be a one and it's February 2019 so this is what we're going to do the label, A1-1292-2019-02. Uh, so I'll go do the rest of these, and um, we'll see about hooking them up. All right, we got the batteries all ganged up on the box here, on the bench here, and um, got them all hooked up according to um, what APC says they should be. Um, so you got the negative going to these two negatives, and then... You got the positive from the main connector going to these two positives. And then there's a jumper from this negative to this positive, And a jumper from this negative to this positive. So there's some combination of series and parallel going on here that gets us 25 or 24 volts nominal coming out the, the main plug here. So we can take that. If I can stab my probes into there and get something on the meter come on okay probe stabbed and we got 25.7 so 24 volts nominal so um, so this string is good we're gonna throw it together gonna tape it all up um, the original battery pack that came in that UPS had uh, like some 3M tape in between each of these um, but I don't have all that 3M tape so I'm just gonna duct tape them together or I got some Gorilla Tape and um, we'll do that and then um, we'll do the same thing to the B side. If anybody else is ever doing this, make sure you loop your tape um, to make a little pull tab because at least in these, at least in the model I got, there is no way to get your poles around these these batteries while they're installed in the UPS. So. Make a little pull tab out of the tape. All right, D side, same shit. Twenty-five point seven. So, I'm gonna tape these up, and then we'll stick both sets in. All right, so this is how they're gonna stack up in the UPS. Then they go into that little tunnel, and then each of the. You can see, there's two connectors in there. So the B side is gonna go in first. I'm going to connect its main harness 
then the A side is going to go in, and then we're going to hit the power button and uh, see what it do. All right, there was a little spark when uh, when I got the battery in, but that's good. This thing will close for the most part. Now, now these things will only fire up if you have battery power in them. So if you get one of these used, uh, like I did, and the batteries are absolutely toast, um, it will not fire up. It will not do anything, even with AC power connected. So what we're going to do now, um, I have the AC power connected on this thing. The breaker to it uh, in the back of the unit back there is turned off at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll click it on. Okay. Well, okay. I think it needs that breaker on in the back, so I just went put that on. So maybe it'll come on. Yeah. It's testing. And that transformer humming and that fan come on. Battery is full green. AC is stable. Fans are off and we got no load. Alright. Let's put a little load on her. We'll um, turn on that 1950. And uh, that should be a cakewalk for this thing. Alright, so the 1950s alive. Let's turn it on. Oh, it's not happy because I only got one power supply plugged in, but otherwise she should be fine. Okay. Sweet.